Tonight our storm trackers have their eyes on the radar watching whether any more storms will fire up and move into southeast Texas. Now some areas north of the triangle have seen a lot of rain. Yeah, they even had a tornado warning earlier. We were on the air with you before eight o'clock tonight. The rest of us still waiting. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn. I think I just heard some thunder here in Beaumont. Yeah, we got one little cell coming in from Winnie, uh, as you can see, into Beaumont right now. Also some showers, some thunder showers in through central sections of uh, Jasper, Newton counties, back over to near Curryville. That's what we're watching right now. Nothing severe. The tornado watch has expired. That's the good news. However, we're still watching it's complex, a little cluster of showers and storms. They are moving to the east, but if you look at the shower activity over our area, they're moving northeast activity over the Gulf moving towards the northeast. So what I'm thinking is that these are going to head towards uh, maybe uh, Brazos Port Galveston and then begin turning off towards the northeast. Why do I think that? Future cast dead on right now. Look what it does. Now not as severe is not as strong as what we saw up in the lakes area, but we do see some scattered showers and thunderstorms in the triangle coming up around midnight, one o'clock in the morning. We'll see if this pans out. Considerable uncertainty exists. We've reduced our rain chances. Rain cooled 63 in Jasper and Woodville, 67 into uh, Silsby and currently in the mid 70s uh, here in the Triangle. Very warm out there. Think we'll drop to uh, near 70 in the Triangle with abundant cloud cover, but the rains will be out of here by uh, morning. It will begin to uh, gradually clear as the morning wears on. A beautiful warm afternoon scheduled and more on that weekend forecast shortly on 12 News. And be sure to sign up for severe weather alerts inside of the 12 News Now app. And while you're there, you can track the storms using our live interactive radar. A breaking news alert now. A deadly crash has closed the northbound lanes of Cardinal Drive near MLK. It happened around 7 tonight, and at last check, that road remains closed. Police have rerouted traffic, so you'll want to avoid the area. Say if you're coming from Mid-County into Beaumont tonight, officers have not said how many vehicles were involved. Again, Cardinal Drive northbound closed near MLK following a deadly crash. Tonight, Beaumont police and candidates running for city council and mayor want answers. They say someone intentionally targeted the campaign tents of black candidates. You see the damage there. On Monday, everything was all good. Campaign workers showed up to find this damage today. Police are investigating the incident and looking at nearby surveillance cameras. Our Jordan James caught up with the candidates who were targeted. They tell him this is unacceptable. He's live tonight at 10. Jordan, while the damage has been cleared up at Rogers Park, these candidates say they will not allow this minor setback to define them or their campaigns. At polling locations, most of the chatter revolves around voting. Ready to go, show up at large. But it's what happened outside that has many people talking. It's unfortunate and unacceptable what happened at Rogers Park. Broken tents, damaged signs, and busted cinder blocks is what a few candidates running for Beaumont mayor and council discovered Friday morning after they arrived at their campaign zone. I've just looked at the situation and I am going to take my incident and use it as if it's a lemon and I'm just going to turn it into lemonade. Early indications are that only black candidates property was vandalized, including War II candidate Miles Haynes, who believes this was a distraction. Tent doesn't stop us and signs don't vote, but people do. And there are people still watching this and they can come out and vote and we're not going to be distracted by this activity that happened this morning or the drama. Beaumont police are investigating and are checking nearby surveillance cameras for leads. In the meantime, mayoral candidate LaShawn Proctor says it's time for everyone to unite. Everybody has an opinion. Everyone has feelings. Having a seat at the table and talk about it. How can we talk about it? And that would make it much better uh, to understand both sides and then just come up with something to where we can make sure as a city and as a community that it does not happen again. So far, police don't have a motive. If you know anything about the vandalism at Rogers Park, you're advised to contact Beaumont Police or Crime Stoppers at 833-TIPS. Reporting here live in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. Developing tonight at 10, we're learning more about the two men who died when a crane fell onto their pickup truck on I-10. The freak accident has investigators puzzled. They say part of a crane dislodged and came crashing onto their truck. 
The victims were Safraz Karawadia and Altaf Kasawadia. The two are brothers, both from Friendswood, which is a suburb of Houston, but they own businesses here in Southeast Texas. Our sister station in Houston reached out to the family, but they were too emotional to talk right now. Now, sorting out the details of this accident is going to be a challenge. We know DPS is in charge, but OSHA is also involved, along with TxDOT, because the crane belonged to a contractor who was out there building an overpass. As 12 News first reported last night, Johnson Brothers is handling the I-10 widening project. Today, the company told us the crane actually belonged to their subcontractor, Hemp Hill Construction. We tried contacting Hemp Hill, but their phone was disconnected. And our messages on social media have gone unanswered. Both the contractor and subcontractor have no major workplace safety violations on their record with OSHA. TxDOT tells us the construction on I-10 will continue during the investigation. Now, for some in Beaumont, Thursday's crane accident brought back bad memories of another accident. In 2016, two people were hurt when part of a large highway sign frame and crane dropped onto their cars on Highway 69 just south of Lucas. The victim sued and won $4.8 million in damages. Chip Ferguson represented them. He says these types of accidents are often preventable with better safety regulations. It's scary and it's unnecessary um, and just should not occur. These people need to be better. Our tax dollars need to be better. We're paying for this. We ought to get what we pay for. And the thing you pay for more than anything should be safety. Now, according to crane specialist Larry Dunville, Thursday's mishap could be weather related. He says the slightest change in footing can cause the crane to sit unevenly and topple. Again, investigators have not said what they think happened. Let's turn to Power City tonight. Motiva says its downtown Port Arthur development project is still a go. The city council got an update on this this week, and Motiva spokesperson today told us while work has slowed, it's only temporary while they wait for historical designations from the state and the federal governments. Motiva now owns four buildings here at Austin Avenue and 5th Street, including the old Federal Building and the Adams Building. Motiva says downtown Port Arthur is, quote, the future home of a Motiva campus that will provide much-needed office space for employees and contractors. In case you missed it, the Texas Medical Board has temporarily suspended the license of a Beaumont doctor. He's charged with sexually assaulting a patient. Dr. Michael Holmes was indicted on the charge in connection to a 2018 incident. His attorney provided a statement to us saying he eagerly awaits the opportunity to prove the falsehood of these allegations and to restore his professional reputation. The Texas House has unanimously passed its proposed two-year, $246 billion budget. Health and Human Services facing the steepest of cuts, an $8.5 billion hole, a 9% decrease over the last budget. Higher education also faces a $3.5 billion cut, and Natural Resources is looking at a 31% cut to the tune of $3.4 billion. House Speaker Dave Phelan said, quote, this budget provides a sound framework to address Texas's growing needs while also maintaining the legislature's commitments. Now the House and Senate still have to hash out their differences before this goes to the governor. Get ready to hit the stores. It is tax-free weekend on emergency supplies in Texas, and that includes some power generators. The holiday is meant to allow Texans to prepare for severe weather. Of course, that includes hurricanes. The holiday starts at 12.01 Saturday and ends at midnight on Monday. In addition to those generators, hurricane shutters, batteries, first aid kits, carbon monoxide detectors, cell phone batteries and chargers, portable radios, you get the picture. All of those types of things qualify. We have that full list on 12newsnow.com. If you're looking to adopt a horse or a burro, we've got the perfect place. Just go to Ford Park tomorrow. The Bureau of Land Management will be holding a wild horse and burro adoption event. It's back up at 8 in the morning. The adoption event features 110 wild horses and burros that once roamed freely on public lands out west, and they're all available for adoption. There's a lot of responsibility, lots and lots of patience, very a lot of patience. Um, because it's not something you can just, you know, you get him today and you're going to go ride him tomorrow because that's like not at all. It's going to take a course of a couple months, you know, to get him to where it's calm, cool, everything's going correctly. Well, to qualify to adopt an animal, you have to be at least 18 with no record of animal abuse. You also have to have 400 square feet available per animal and access to food, water and shelter.